Okay, so the last piece of this puzzle then is to put those first three steps together into what the trace is actually going to look like. And to do that, I'm actually going to start spinning the paper because it's actually helpful to kind of pretend that you're the lead. So, the first step in our conduction cycle is right here. And this is running with, we're going to do lead two because lead two is the main lead you're going to see. It's running pretty parallel to our lead, and it's running in the direction of our lead. So we're going to see it's pretty big. It's going to be a little bit of an oversimplification because most of the time that it's presented, repolarization is actually placed within what's going on in the rest of the heart, so you don't see it. And that may be true. There may be some kind of circuitous cycle that causes this, but I think it makes more sense to, draw, to describe this the way that I am, which is let's just go ahead and get repolarization right in here. And so now my arrow is going in the opposite direction. It's going against my lead. Let's just keep spinning and let's just do the P wave so you can see what you're doing. Let's go up to lead. Lead 1. Now lead 1, I'm not quite as parallel as I was over lead 2. It's still running with my lead, and so it's going to cause an upward deflection. But if you'll note, it's a lower or smaller upward deflection than it was up here. And again, the reason is because this is much more parallel to lead 2 than it is to lead 1. So it looks much bigger to lead 2 than it does to lead 1. Same thing with repolarization. We spin all the way to 3, no need to make you dizzy. Well, now you can see, if we follow our rules, that this is going to look, this is going to, it's almost running perfectly perfect. So it's going to look very small. Okay, so that's the P wave and how we're picking up these two arrows here. Let's come back to lead two. And now is when it gets a little difficult because we have to add in this delay. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it into all of these right now. There's a delay as you wait in Amy. But that is a pause. Let's capture this receptor depolarization in the EKG now. And it's kind of very perpendicular. And it's kind of running against our lead, so it's going to be a very small downward deflection. Let's just go ahead and follow this trace all the way through. Very small downward deflection. We've got this green, which is apical depolarization. It's going to be a big occurrence with my lead. So it's running in the same direction as my lead. I'm next going to pick up late left. And late left runs against my lead, so it's running. My lead is going this way. This curve is going this way, so it's going to be bigger. This last part is perpendicular. And so you might see a little bit of an upward, or you might see just a flat effect. There's going to be a pause between depolarization and repolarization. There's a pause between depolarization and repolarization, and that's reflected on the EKG by some baseline. We got one last wave, and that's the repolarization. It starts running perpendicular to our lead, so we don't see it. It starts to run with our lead. It's going this way. Our lead goes this way, so we're going to move up. You notice it turns the corner, though, and starts heading in the opposite direction of our lead. So that's a typical lead to PQRS trace. What I mean by PQRS is this is called the P wave, this is called the Q wave, this is called the R wave, this is called the S wave, and this is called the T wave. It's typically what you see if you see just a basic trace. And hopefully it's what you see if you look over at your own EKG monitor. Let's jump up to lead one and do the same kind of thing. Now our arrows are obviously going to be a little bit different. We're, we put in our pause already. Let's do septal depolarization. Septal depolarization now is more parallel to this lead. It's running in the opposite direction of the lead, so it's going to be bigger and bigger. Apical depolarization runs with our lead. It's not going to be as big as over here. It's running with our lead. For a good portion of late left ventricular, we're going to be perpendicular. But there's going to be a portion that runs against our lead. So we're going to come back down. 
again, we're going to have that pause. I don't know if you can remember this from upside down, but we're going to have that pause between depolarization and repolarization. And then we've got to pick up the repolarization. That's going to run with our lead for time. It's going to run per perpendicular to our lead, so we won't catch it. It's going to run against our lead. So that's our choice. Again, just to reiterate, I mean, three is a little bit different because we're going to start with septal depolarization. It runs a little bit with our lead, so it's going to go up a little bit. Now, apical depolarization also runs with our lead. Late left is curious because it runs against our lead. turns a corner and runs back with it. It's kind of a funny shape. Can we pause for the step between depolarization and repolarization? And the T wave and the 3 are almost inverted. And the reason that is is because we start running opposite of our runs with our lead, and then it kind of runs back in. And so often, the T wave is inverted. Thank you.